With a fleet of more than 200 aircraft, ANA is Japan's biggest airline. ANA standing for All Nippon Airways, with Nippon being the Japanese word for Japan. And besides its international flights, the airline operates an extensive domestic network with many flights being operated by large twin aisle planes. Japanese airlines are well known for catering to the country's enormous domestic demand with flying large twin aisle planes on very short flights. ANA actually operates one of the densest 777s on the planet as they have a couple of Boeing 777-300s with 514 seats. They also used to operate a special version of the Boeing 747 that was specifically designed for the Japanese domestic market, the Boeing 747-400D, D standing for domestic. Those are 747-400s with some minor modifications for domestic operations, such as the missing winglets, as the advantage of the reduced fuel burn only outweighs the disadvantage of the extra weight after a certain distance, as well as additional windows in the rear of the upper deck to add more seats where usually a large galley would be. Unfortunately, those 747s were retired in 2014. But that doesn't matter to us anyway, because today we won't fly on one of ANA's largest aircraft, we'll fly on their smallest, a Dash 8 Q400 operated by their regional subsidiary ANA Wings. So let's see what they're like. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new flight review. My name is David and I'm in the city of Fukuoka right now, which is located on Kyushu, the southernmost of Japan's four main islands. And today we'll fly up to Osaka, specifically to Osaka's Itami Airport, which is the domestic airport that serves the Kansai region, not to be confused with the larger international airport, which is just named Osaka Kansai Airport. And I've actually been to Itami Airport once before, all the way back in 2016, when I did a trip report about Japan Airlines 777 on a flight from there to Tokyo Haneda. And I'll fly on the exact same route later today, also on Japan Airlines, but on their newer Airbus A350 to see what that plane is like. And if you're interested about that as well, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you won't miss any of our upcoming flight reviews. So without further ado, let's head to the airport. My hotel had a metro station literally right in front of it. And it's not just any metro line, it's the Kuko line. Kuko being the Japanese word for airport. Fukuoka's airport is located right in the middle of the city and is just minutes away from the city center, as well as Hakata Station, the main railway station of Fukuoka. After riding the metro for just four stations, we arrived at Fukuoka's domestic terminal. The metro connects to the domestic terminal, which is where most passengers arrive and depart from. The international terminal, however, is on the opposite side of the airport and not connected to the metro. But luckily, there is a free shuttle bus that runs between the two. Across the planet, there is a lot of standardization in international air travel, so the general experience of flying will be the same almost anywhere. But it's domestic flights where international laws and guidelines don't apply, so in some countries you'll come across some peculiar differences. In Japan, for example, domestic flight tickets have a completely different format. They are a bit smaller and vary depending on the airline. International tickets still look the same as they do elsewhere, which is why you have to go to a separate check-in counter if you have an international connection to get the right kind of ticket. It's also common with domestic flights in Japan to just walk up to the counter and buy a ticket right there, which is why availability is also displayed on the departure screens near the check-in area. In Japan, availability of anything, including things like train or movie tickets, is often displayed like this. A circle meaning available. Just think of it as an O as in your OK to go. A triangle means that there are only a few seats left. And an X means sold out. And a dash means not applicable, like it was never available in the first place. And the column here switches between the different classes of travel. My flight is slightly delayed and I highly appreciate that the airline clearly communicated due to what reason. 
At Fukuoka Airport, both ANA and Japan Airlines operate large domestic lounges, which also have their own security lines, separate from the normal lines. Japan being Japan, of course they offer slippers for when you need to take off your shoes at the security check. And that's not a priority line thing, that's just normal in Japan. In addition to the boarding pass, you'll also get a little ticket saying that you went through security. Most Japanese airports have really amazing apron views thanks to their single glass, clean, unobstructed windows. Over there is an Embraer 170 of J Air heading to Matsuyama. This Boeing 737-800 of Skymark is about to depart for Tokyo Haneda. And this A350 spent the night here in Fukuoka and is being pulled into the parking position to operate the 8.30am flight to Tokyo Haneda. By the way, I have no clue what gym this is with the apron view here, but if I lived in Fukuoka, I'd be ripped. After a brief cold green tea at the lounge, it was time to head to our departure gate. I'm aware that most people don't care for lounges when they're not included in the ticket price, which is why I don't usually show them in these YouTube videos. But if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get a brief review with some photos of all the lounges I visit, plus all the flights I take, even those not featured on YouTube, so make sure you follow me on Twitter. After going through the ticket gate, you get another little paper slip saying that you've boarded. Look at that, the bus even has umbrellas in case it rains. Luckily, today's weather seems to be nice. And here's our ride to Osaka, JA8578, a 2011 built Dash 8 Q400. The red character here is the Japanese postal mark. Many Japanese domestic planes carry it, indicating that the plane is carrying mail, which is given a high priority in Japan. The symbol is also used to indicate Japan's equivalent of a zip code when writing an address. And the reason why it's on many ANA planes is that the company has a close relationship with the Japanese Postal Service dating back to the 1950s, when ANA's predecessor, the Nippon Helicopter and Aeroplane Transport Company was established. And that's also where the IATA code NH comes from, Nippon Helicopter. To this day, ANA is in the helicopter business with their subsidiary ANH, all Nippon Helicopters. Our Q400 operates in a single class configuration featuring the 2-2 configuration found on all Q400s. The seats found on ANA's Q400s are the BE Aerospace 945 series, which is a common model found across many Q400s. The legroom is fantastic owing to the fact that ANA only has 74 seats aboard their Q400 while the maximum allowed by the manufacturer for this type is 90. Each seat also has its own tray table and you'll find personal air vents and reading lights in the panel above. I chose seat 12A particularly for the gear view, which is rather unique on the Dash 8 as the wheel is right next to you. If you dislike sitting next to babies, you can choose a seat as far from one as possible as ANA and Japan Airlines both show which seats have passengers with babies assigned to them on their seat maps. A very thoughtful feature. A baby changing table is also installed on this plane in the forward lavatory. Now it's time to get the engines going and make our way up to Osaka.
you see how the name of the airport was spelled out in huge letters on the ground? This is very common across Japan, not only at airports, but also on schools and hospitals to write the physical location on them. This serves as an additional aid during disaster relief when orientation using electronic means might be disrupted or when natural disasters damage nearby landmarks rendering the area unrecognizable, such as in the aftermath of a tsunami or an earthquake. What a beautiful morning to fly over Japan, cruising over the snow-covered mountains of Kyushu. Lavatories aboard the Q400 are small, very small. Complimentary non-alcoholic beverages are offered on all ANA domestic flights, with a selection including coffee, hot or cold Japanese tea, water, apple juice, and beef consomme. I just went with some cold green tea, which came in this Demon Slayer-themed cup. ANA currently has a Boeing 767 flying in a special Demon Slayer livery. Pretty cool. Cruising along the inland sea coast of the island of Shikoku, which is defined by large ports, oil refineries, shipbuilding yards, and other industries. And here in the center of it is the city of Niihama. Believe it or not, ANA has a stream to your device entertainment system installed aboard its Q400s. You can check the weather, watch movies on demand, or like Demon Slayer, read ebooks, or listen to music. However, you need a specific ANA entertainment app for that, which you must download before the flight. Internet access itself, however, is not available. Over there, you can already see Osaka's main international gateway, Kansai International Airport, with its terminal building being the longest continuous terminal in the world at a length of 1.7 kilometers. We're already above the outskirts of Osaka. What an amazing flight, we even caught a glimpse of the famous Osaka castle on approach. Welcome to Osaka's Itami Airport. The crew noticed me filming everything and being excited about the flight, so they handed me some souvenirs before we landed, including a handwritten note. How amazing is that?
どうもありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。As is usual in Japan, the ground crew and a flight attendant all bowed when the bus left for the terminal. This was a very short flight, one that was on the surface not all that interesting, something that usually would have been a trip report with subtitles on our channel. But I hope I was able to make this video interesting with all the little fun facts around the trip. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. I want to focus more on content like this on our channel, but these type of narrated videos are considerably more work than true reports with just subtitles, so those true reports will definitely stick around in the future as well, because I simply don't have time to make an elaborate narrated video about every flight we take. I hope you understand that. With that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and will join me again for a new true report in the coming days and a new narrated episode of Brutally Honest next week, that time on a longer flight. I promise. Minasan, mata raishu, arigatou gozaimasu. You know what a crazy plane the Boeing 747-400D was? They were able to fit 86 passengers on the upper deck of that Boeing 747. On our Q400 today, there were only 74 seats. That means on the upper deck of that plane alone, they had more seats than on the entire plane that we flew on today. I mean, that's just insane. I love airplanes. Amazing.